You have a name for your followers already. Yeah. No, they're too little. You, you princesses. It's. <laughs> What's up, princesses? Hello guys, welcome back to my channel and I hope you guys are doing great today. So today I have a special guest here on my channel, which is very interesting. So I won't mention his name, I won't mention her name for now, but it's actually very interesting. They found me on my channel, which is so, so nice. <laughs> and um, uh, yeah, and he happened to be from where I'm from in South Africa, which is in the west of Johannesburg and he's living right here in Munich and yeah, we met up for lunch I think two weeks ago, right? Mm -hmm. Or like three weeks ago and we got along and I invited them to my channel and here they are and you can introduce yourself Hi, I'm Ricarda, I'm from Germany and yeah, this is my boyfriend <laughs> Hi guys, Brandon and I'm from South Africa, from Rudolpwet, same as Tobopo And he's wearing a Tayway jacket representing the South African brands. <laughs> so as you already saw the title of the video, it is things that we find weird about Germany, maybe South Af we, us being South African, things that we find quite weird about Germany and Germans. And we have a German girl here who is going to be answering all of our questions let's say so stay tuned and i hope you enjoy the video and please don't forget to give the video a like and subscribe to my channel okay so what do we as south africans find weird about germany <laughs> <laughs> so number one number one is going to be the sauna and how uh, comfortable germans are just being nude in public in general I don't know what your experience been with that. Um, I remember was the first time I experienced this was at the English Garden in 2017, I think, and I just saw people so relaxed chilling by the park, and this is like a super public park, you guys. It's in the middle of the city. <laughs> and then they're just right there, naked and just really naked and just so free. And I was really shocked, like how do people do that, you know? And the second time it happened um, at the Isa. And I was just like, okay, what the hell is this? The third time is, of course, with the, the Tema things. What do they call them? Tema? Tema. Tema? Yeah, yeah so these are basically the wellness centers yes. that people okay. go to. And there's huge parts of the wellness centers that are uh, completely nude. So you leave your clothes behind, basically. And then you go in and there's a selection of different pools, saunas, um, even sometimes bars inside of pools that you then walk up to the pool nude, uh, up to the bar nude and order your drink. So they really go big with nudity here in Germany. Yeah, and it's actually a mandatory nudist area, so you're not even allowed to wear something. So if you decide to go into this bar that has like this nudist area, you will have to be nude. So there is no choice for you. Maybe you can cover yourself with a towel, but no costume or anything. So. Yeah, that's definitely something that before leaving Germany or before like going abroad and seeing other countries and cultures, I didn't perceive as unusual. So because it's so normal, you just go into the park and then there's this area and there's new people lying around. And that's just something you wouldn't see somewhere else. Or like, it's not so public. It's not so much part of daily life. I think usually it would be somewhere, you know, um, at a certain area where people would go to, but here it's really public. So. Yeah. Now I would say that nudity in South Africa is really, really a big niche. No. Like you would just. <laughs> but no. I didn't think I've ever been to a nudist beach in South Africa. I, I've never heard of it. Do we even have one? I think there's one or two in Cape Town. Yeah. Oh, okay. But yeah, so I think it's really like a niche thing. But yeah, I'm pretty sure ninety percent of Germans by their old age have been nude in public at some point. That is true. And for example, also at my gym, um, uh, if you if you want to go in the sauna, there's like a sign that actually um, says no costumes. And I'm like, what <laughs> the hell? Yeah, it would be the opposite of South Africa. It's the Please opposite of South Africa. You have to cover up. You have to cover up. But number two, we're going to be talking about the social norms here in Germany. And uh, do you want to go first or should I go first? Yeah, let me start off. So. Something that was really difficult to get used to was how important or how heavy the question of how are you is taken here in Germany. People really take it seriously when you ask them how are you. I mean in South Africa I would just ask anybody if they can pay a teller, uh, fuel attendant, anybody that I came across even if it was just for tra transactional purposes how are you doing mm -hmm. and just expect a 
oh well new you know something yeah. like that and even if they didn't answer then you sort of say oh also good you know it's such an automatic response mm-hmm. um but yeah if you have to go into a supermarket and ask the person behind the counter how are you you get us like really a look of confusion of shock it's probably the first time that someone's asked them how they are the whole day and they, i don't think <laughs> they the know life, <laughs> I don't think that they know how to answer that question casually because it's not a casual question yet. So mm-hmm. they really then feel okay if they are going to answer this question, they have to be honest. So it, one shouldn't be shocked if if you ask someone how they are and they say they're not well. You know, and in South Africa, if it's not a close friend, you would never say to a stranger, "I'm not doing well." You know, you just say, "Yeah, I'm fine." Yeah, and also be prepared to get a a long speech about it. I'm not okay. And then they explain why they're not okay or why they're good. And then they tell you about the weather and the whatnot and the whatnot. Yeah. We look at, we ask and it's more like, hello, like, how are you? And just like, I'm good. It's part of the greeting. Done. You know, it's part yeah. of the greeting. And it's this typical thing of here, you just don't ask how somebody is unless you're friends with them. Yeah. It's just, I don't know. I don't know if, if I mean, in general, this question, I think, because it's just too much maybe because you're like, okay, you just go and say hello and bye. Because if you ask them how they are, they would anyway say good, you know, like sort of. Yeah, like, so yeah, you don't really see the purpose. Yeah, you don't see the purpose. Why? Why what's you ask? What's the benefit for you to ask that now, you know? And also, if somebody would ask me probably here on the train or whatever how I am, I would be like, okay, confused because. Um, <laughs> you see them, we got a German in the room. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's going on? Why, why are you coming so close to me? Private. <laughs> but, sorry, don't come in. <laughs> That is so, so weird though, like, yeah, I know really what it is, but I think once, once I'm not in Germany, because in South Africa it's really like, you call somebody and you're like, hello, how are you, good and you, and then you start actually with the conversation, here's like, hi, I want to have an appointment, da 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 da, mm-hmm. so it's like, there is no such thing as, you know, asking sort of some questions before, but it's like, come straight to the point, like, this is what I want and I don't have time for any... You know, small like talks, I'd yeah. say. You guys in small talks are like enemies, I would say. <laughs> no, unless it's the weather, the Germans can talk about the weather non stop. It's like the topic of the day is, oh, today's not good weather. And then they'll just be like, oh, you are not good weather. That is actually <laughs> true. Like back and forth. It's like really that's the win, that's the only topic that you can guarantee a win with in German in Germany for sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Number three, um, it's the food and something that Brendan is very passionate about. So you're going to go first. Okay, cool. So <laughs> I must say, uh, Ricardo, that I don't understand why you guys will call a loaf of bread like a rectangular, rectangular loaf toast. I mean, I've, I've got a definition here and a toast is defined as the action of heating or browning bread with an instrument like a toaster, right? So toast only becomes toast after it's been put in the toaster, before it's bread. Otherwise, if you call it toast, what is it before it becomes toast? I don't understand. The thing is, you know, we had this discussion a lot of times before that. And today, when and you got here. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a huge thing. And I mean, I must speak for Germany. Germany has a lot of great breads. And I just feel like a toast, a toast bread. It's called toast bread here. It's just not, it's just not worth being called bread, you know? Because you have so many nice breads here. <laughs> I just want to say, for us South Africans, if your mom sends you to pick and pay and says go buy us bread, you're going to come back with like a pack of Sasko bread wrapped in the plastic there, maybe even sliced. That's yeah. your bread. You, you know nothing yeah, but else. But the thing is, if, and if you're I mom, don't understand why that is not bread here. People really look down on it as, as an inferior type of bread. <laughs> as, as if it's not even bread and I just don't get it. The thing is, if, somebody, if your mom would send you to buy bread here, you wouldn't come back with a toast. She would tell you to go buy toast and then you would come with a Sesco bag of toast mm-hmm. because that's toast. But if she sends you to go buy bread, then you're going to come back with like a loaf of sourdough bread probably or a ciabatta or whatever, you know, but that's bread that you would buy in a bakery and toast is something that you buy like in a plastic bag and that's the thing that you actually put into the toaster. Okay, so and then, then you can toast it. bread and then it's toasted bread, but it's not toast. So then tell me, after you toast toast, does it become toasted toast? Or <laughs> how, 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 do you order, how do you order toast? So let's say you're at a hotel and you want okay. now the South African version of toast, which means browned bread because it's been heated. You want toast and an egg. How would you order that? Would you that. say, can I please have toasted toast and a bread? Just makes no sense. <laughs> so the thing is, 
isn't that is you have toast and you know this toast bread is always going to get toasted. Oh, so it doesn't get eaten without, without it being yeah, so it toasted. Yeah, it is like, you know, it's, it's just like untoasted toast. Oh, you see, that's also different because yeah, we, can get, we can get untoasted oh. bread for sandwich to school. You don't that need to true. toast that bread. You don't have to. So you guys don't eat it unless it's toasted? No, like I would say, I mean, I had it untoasted, but it's not usual and I think people don't really like it. Like I think you buy it because you have a toaster at home and it's sort of made for this toaster because it just fits in. You know, the toaster is <laughs> strange. <laughs> the rectangular shape and you can but put it so in. But it's so tiny also. Have you seen the little? Yeah. It's, it's no, not a normal nice. one. If it's you're like, going to miss bread, so bring your own Sasko bread. <laughs> bring your own because you're not going to find good, good quality rectangular shape bread here. It's not going to happen. Number four, it's about restaurants and slash um, table manners. And here in Germany, when you order pizza or when you order a burger, okay, I'll talk about the pizza first. You get your pizza, it's all rounded, of course, but in South Africa, it's also rounded, but then it's usually cut for you. They cut it perfectly for you into eight slices. And here it comes perfectly in a round, no cut, and you have to do it on your own. And that is super, super weird for me because Cutting that thing to have it perfect sliced, it's not that easy. And also, people here eat pizza with a fork and a knife. They just said knife and fork, so. Knife! <laughs> <Just> like... <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Okay, so, and the people here, they eat um, uh, pizza with a knife and a fork. And also, some of, I realized some people eat burger with that also, which is so weird because I feel like it's hand food and a burger, you're gonna be eating it like this. Hum, hum, hum. Yeah, a bit weird. <laughs> and a pizza, you hold it with your hand and you feed yourself with the hand. But people here just force this knife and fork, and I think it's really, really weird for me. What do you think? Yeah, I've also seen it. The pizzas come in served without uh, it already being sliced. That's something that is strange for me. I have a little theory that it's to save on labor. Seeing that labor is so much more expensive here, yeah, they just. <laughs> Out the kitchen straight to the, the table. I don't know what do you think, Rox? Is it a normal thing? I think it probably is. Unless you take it or do take away, it's not cut. And mm, yeah, many people, most of the people, I don't know most of the people mm -hmm. because I personally eat it with the hand because I don't really? know. Yeah, I like this it. This is very <laughs> South African. I yeah, just eat it. You six as well. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's being said, it's, I only do that in German restaurants and they bring me these small portions and then I feel like, flip, I spent 300 rand on this thing, it better last and I eat it like, piece to piece to make it last. Oh, that's another, I think it ties in quite well to the next topic of restaurants, mm -hmm. which is a, a personal pet peeve for me here in, in Germany. I just don't think that you get value for money here. In South Africa, I'm so used to, you know, for example, I'm thinking of mug and bean, you walk up, there's a waiter or waitress there smiling, waiting for you, ask you how many people sit you down, brings you the menu. Mm -hmm. If I then want some water, I order tap water, they bring me tap water free of charge. Doesn't exist here in Germany. With lemon, mean, by the way. With lemon. They even ask you if you want ice <laughs> or lemon. That's yeah. the level of service you get. Then you order a burger and you get now a big hearty burger with lots of cheese and then they say avo, you know it's going to be like half to a full avo. Lots of chips. Here you go to Germany, you'll spend three times as much. You'll wait there in the lobby like for five minutes and everyone just wonders if you actually are a customer or <laughs> standing there for some reason. Then if you're lucky, they'll come and sit you down. You order your burger, like I said, you pay three times as much. You get a tiny little portion that forces you, in my case, to eat with a knife and fork so that it lasts a bit so that you can make your date night, you know, just last a bit longer. <laughs> So yeah, I can't, I think if a South African restaurant had to move to Germany, they would kill it. Because they, they really have the are. best prices, the best service, uh -huh. and the best quality. Savannah is one of them here in Munich. Savannah is well rated. <laughs> yeah, you yes, can so, so okay. Savannah is a South African restaurant here in Munich. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know, Ricardo, you've actually now experienced both worlds in terms of yeah. restaurants. What so, do you think? I mean, I must say it really is true because I face the same issues. When you go to a restaurant, um, especially right now, I think with this Corona crisis, like you stand there and sometimes they want you to wait till they come and seat you, but then there is no sign of saying that. And then you sit down and they come and say, no, you're not allowed to actually sit down without us seating you, but there is no sign. 
-hmm. And then in other places, it's completely different and you can just walk up straight to a table and sit down. So you never know what's going on. And I think that's, a, that's also for Germans. Like you just said, you have to sort of guess what's, you know, what's the case with this place. So, and also for the portion sizes and um, actually what you get for your money. It's such a big difference. So, I mean, here, if you order, I would say meat or something that has meat in it, then you would get just a tiny bit of meat um, because meat is expensive here and I don't know and also with the Evo you you know barely get like half an Evo, but you probably get a like quarter an Evo or something mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you, you really just don't get a lot of the good things on it so yeah I must really agree on that um, that's a point for South Africans <laughs> and also um, this what, what you mentioned about um, standing outside in a restaurant and waiting for them to sit you down or whether you have to sit down and then you come back. No, they come to you and they say, you're not supposed to be sitting there. As a foreigner, I think um, that is really rude because yeah, in South Africa, rude. they greet you so nicely. I miss it. Like they greet you. customer is king in South Africa. Mm. It's amazing. And I know a lot of Germans have told me that they prefer the service the way it is, but I do think that is not called service. It's more like convenience or I don't know. But yeah, it's more transactional. It's, it's, yeah, it's really not. It doesn't fall under the definition of service. Mm -hmm. It's not service. You guys have been robbed of service. <laughs> okay, number five, this is more about the health. So in South Africa, when somebody is sick, we prefer to have something with that is not more natural, something with some chemicals. And we would have this. This is a typical um, flu. Um, what is it? Flu okay. fighter. Flu fighter. <laughs> <laughs> we have Mad Lemon, and this is how it looks like. You have a sachet, and then you mix it with hot water, and then you drink it, of course. And then here in Germany, they're quite big on homeopathology, and then they have these things. Yeah, but this is not the one they use for the flu. I don't think so. And then this is how it looks like. Oopsie. It's a very tiny bit. Oh, you wouldn't even see it. It's really, really tiny. And then it's very tasteless also. So you just have it like that. And then that's about it. And then, so um, I will let Ricardo explain this homeopathology thing. Because to me, it's still quite new. Even though my mother-in-law is actually practicing it. And uh, I use a lot of these things also. And I do think it actually works but I'm still not used to it. So maybe you can explain it and how it works and whether you believe in it actually. Uh, so I think in Germany in general, or what I've seen is that when you have a flu or something that is um, not so severe yet, you would stick to tr like uh, natural medicine. And I think these globally, so this is like this, this small pizza to go for this show. Globalies? Yeah. Globalies. Yeah, and they are sort of have like homeopathic, um, things in them that sort of heal you naturally and there's also lots of other pills that are made from what radish or like sort of some herb or whatever before you actually go to something more chemical and i think whereas for south africa the default mode is like med lemon which you take for everything when you have like a cold or a flu or whatever um so yeah also for example strepsils yeah mm -hmm. yeah and i think in general while you know, these homeopath solutions do sort of exist. Um, it's not mass scale and people don't really rely on them when it comes to, you know, fixing their flu or something like that. They would rather go straight to a pharmaceutical option to just them, ask the person behind the counter what helps and the person's going to give them either painkillers or strepsils or made lemon, something like that. And you guys can say it with me also. And number, number six. six, which is the last one. <laughs> you missed that one, Harold. Right? <laughs> number six it's about the fashion here in germany so in south africa we have gym clothes i go to the grocery store with my gym clothes i know south africans do it it's really a normal thing we just go out um, to the grocery store to the gym of course with our gym clothes and what else i used yeah. to go to campus with my gym clothes it was not a problem. It was really a normal thing, actually. Your leggings are a girl's best friend in South Africa, I think. <laughs> he has a point. <laughs> and then here, I have never seen anybody with leggings, of course, except at the gym. I feel like the Germans are so organized. So they have gym clothes for gym, and then they have like um, work clothes for work and casual clothes for outing and whatnot and whatnot. I think you guys really take your 
dress code or fashion quite seriously i would say and uh, for example when we go to gym my husband actually wears his um, casual clothes his jeans and whatnot and then he only changes into gym clothes at the gym something that i would never do i leave my i leave the house with my gym clothes we get in the car and then i go to i get to to the gym and then i have my gym clothes which is super convenient obviously uh -huh. and why do you have to why do you have to complicate it it's like <laughs> syrup, it's so complicated like why do you have to do that tell me why i mean i think <laughs> it's, it's sort of a thing of I mean, it's, it's not a general thing, but I perceive it as like, you know, people are running around outside with, um, let's say, just sweatpants and whatever. It's just not seen as professional and you, or like not seen as something that you do when you're out for being casual. Like It's, it's not quite, fancy. Yeah, it's, it's like... <laughs> you guys are fancy. <laughs> it's like, it just stands, sticks out, you know, if you, if you go like, everybody has jeans and has a shirt or, you know, whatever they wear. Mm -hmm. um, and if, if you have like sweatpants or, I don't know, leggings or like, you know, gym outfit, I don't know. I think for people, it's like, oh, okay, this person must go to gym right now or come but from the gym. It's like, it can't be different, you know, you're yeah. wearing that. Like, I don't know. I mean... So is there, no <laughs> such thing as, is. is there no such thing as chill clothes for public? If you leave public, it must be like... No, you can do it, obviously, but it's... It probably will get, I mean, we won't even get a look probably, but it's like normally people don't do it. Like you go out and you go, you know, buy groceries and let's say you do your big groceries then you wouldn't do it in sweatpants or leggings or whatever, but like in your normal day clothes, because you know, that's what you wear in the day. Mm -hmm. Sort of, I don't know, your jeans, your dress, whatever. And then if you want to do a workout, then you change into to your gym clothes. <laughs> you know, it just has, you know, it's gym clothes. That's Do you know how comfortable leggings are? <laughs> like gym clothes are literally the most comfortable clothes you could ever wear. And when somebody goes to the grocery store, you just want to be comfortable. And I feel like that is a perfect thing to wear to that place instead of trying to wear your jeans and whatnot. I really think that is super, super weird personally. You could yeah. bring a fashion revolution to Germany. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't like that. <laughs> I think it's just less common here. I heard also Absolutely. that in, in the US, for instance, that mm -hmm. many uh, kids go to school in sweatpants. I mean, if I would have gone to school with sweatpants, just no, big no. Yeah. I mean, we don't have school uniform, but going to school with sweatpants just sends a signal. Or like, you know, teachers will say like, yeah, did you just stand up or what? <laughs> uh, get, get up. Get so, up oh, bed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So that's sort of what you're sending out, and I think it's the same when you go out to supermarket, sort of. Yeah. Like you're just, you, you will just, you know, see, okay, this person's wearing sweatpants. Yeah, not so cool. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you guys for watching. My... Shucks. So thank you, Brandon. Thank you, Ricardo, for joining me. And also, maybe you guys can add your Instagram handles and what's your Instagram yeah, handle? Yeah, please follow me at, at brands underscore din. And Ricardo? At Ricardo Malin. But I'll... <laughs> what? <laughs> you got a private profile. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And yeah. Um... And don't forget to buy merch. What? <laughs> the Bobo merch. You should do shirts and hoodies and all of that. <laughs> no. <laughs> you have a name for your followers already. No, they're too little. You, you princesses. It's <laughs> <laughs> What's up, princesses? Um, thank you so much for watching my video and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed Ricarda and Brandon here. And also, please don't forget to give the video a like and also subscribe to my channel. And from us, okay. goodbye! Cheers. What a mess! Nice! <laughs>